My name is Emma. I live with my parents and have a sister named Sophia. She's always been the golden child, beautiful, smart, and adored by our parents. As for me, I've always felt invisible in my family. Emma, hiding in your room again? You're such a waste of potential. Don't think we'll be around forever to take care of you, they'd often say. I never expected them to be around forever. I have my own thoughts and goals, but my parents have labeled me as a NET and never take me seriously. One day, Sophia approached me. Poor Emma, you're neither pretty nor talented. Have you ever wondered what you're even living for? I'm happy with my life, so don't say things like that. I replied. Oh well, as you wish, but let me tell you something exciting. What's that? I'm getting married to a very handsome, wealthy man. That's great for you, I said, genuinely happy for her. Jealous, aren't you? You'll never get married. She assumed I was envious and continued to brag. Marriage isn't something I care much about. So whether I get married or not doesn't matter to me. I was planning to attend her wedding because, after all, she's my sister. But then… What? You're coming to my wedding? She asked, shocked. Yes. Is that a problem? Of course. It is. If you show up, you'll ruin the ceremony. What do you mean by that? You're useless and pathetic. Just stay away. Why are you being so cruel? I just want to celebrate your wedding. I don't need your congratulations. Don't come. Sophia's contempt was clear. She didn't want me there, and our parents agreed. But I felt that it would be wrong for no family to attend, so I decided to go anyway. On the wedding day, as I arrived in my dress, my parents spotted me. What are you doing here? We told you not to come, they shouted. Sophia overheard the commotion and came over. Why is she here? I didn't invite you. But if no family is present, wouldn't that look suspicious? I thought it would be better if I attended. Why do you always meddle in things that don't concern you? Your existence is a secret from his family, you know. What do you mean? I asked, shocked. We didn't invite you to the family dinner or any other events. We couldn't risk them finding out about you, Sophia explained, smirking. How could you do something so heartless? This is how it should be. If they knew we had a useless sister like you, the marriage might be called off. She laughed, and our parents joined in. They were united in erasing me from their lives. Get out, you useless waste of space. Sophia yelled, fury in her eyes. I realized then that nothing I said would make a difference. I had no place in this family anymore. So, I decided to leave. I'm going home then, goodbye. They all laughed as I walked away, but as I was leaving, someone called out to me. Boss, good work today. Good work. Wait, what are you doing here? I asked confused. Yes, I'm the one getting married, didn't you know? What? How do you know Caleb? And why did you call me boss? Oh, so to you, he's just Caleb, but at work, he's the president of the company I run. No way, you're the president, and Sophia is your sister? Yes, she's my sister but she didn't include me in the family introductions. Why would she do that? Caleb asked, bewildered. She thought I was useless, a NET. Sophia, is this true? Caleb shouted, glaring at my sister. But, she's always in her room, just staring at her computer. I never imagined she was working. Sophia stammered, clearly shaken. Caleb's anger only grew. Don't be ridiculous. The boss gives us precise instructions from home. She's a highly skilled executive. Sophia finally realized the enormity of what she'd done. I, I didn't know, Emma, 
I'm so sorry. It's fine, sister. I understand now what kind of person you are. I'll be going home. I'll call for the limousine. A limousine? Sophia gasped. Boss, are you leaving? Caleb asked, concerned. Yes, it seems I'm not welcome here. Caleb's anger turned on Sophia again. Sophia, how could you speak to your sister like that? But I didn't know. How could I have known? Ignorance is no excuse, boss. I deeply apologize for Sophia's behavior. It's fine. She's family, so you don't need to apologize. No, I can't forgive this. I'm calling off the wedding. What? Caleb, what are you saying? Sophia cried out. Quiet! I can't marry someone who disrespects the boss, Caleb declared, his voice filled with conviction. But why are you so angry? Yes, I said awful things to Emma, but this reaction is too much, Sophia protested. You see, I owe the boss more than you can imagine. My work history was a mess. I kept changing jobs so frequently that it became nearly impossible to get hired anywhere. The only opportunities left were with companies that exploited their workers, offering poor conditions and no respect for rights. Just when I was about to give up and take one of those jobs, I got an unexpected opportunity, an interview at the boss's company. Caleb was reminiscing about that time when he first joined my company. It takes me back. I remember the day I interviewed. The boss didn't care about my messy resume. She wanted to meet me. The person behind the paper. After a long conversation, she saw who I really was and gave me a chance. Working for her company changed my life. It's a place that values fair treatment and respects its employees. Wow. I didn't know that. My sister chimed in, desperately trying to get on Caleb's good side. What a wonderful story. But Caleb wasn't fooled. He saw right through her act and grew even angrier. You. It's obvious you're trying to charm me, but I have no intention of forgiving the disrespect you showed the boss. Caleb's genuine anger left my sister trembling. Please don't cancel the wedding. Father. Mother. Say something. She pleaded, looking to our parents for support. But they were too scared to intervene and quickly shifted the blame. We didn't mean to blame Emma as much as Sophia did. They stammered. This is all her doing. What? But if the wedding is cancelled? My sister cried, but Caleb cut her off, explaining what would happen next. If we cancel the wedding, we'll have to pay the full cancellation fee since it's on the same day. What? How much is the cancellation fee? The total cost of the wedding was $30,000, so you'd owe the full amount. $30,000? That's outrageous! We should just go through with the wedding. Sorry, but I can't do that, Caleb replied firmly. I can't forgive what you said to the boss, and if we were to get married, I'm sure your abusive behavior would continue. I can't live with someone like that. Dangerous? Han, please, Sophia begged, her voice trembling. Caleb then turned to me. What do you think, boss? She's saying all the right things now, but it's just an act to get out of this situation. If you get married, she'll likely start treating you poorly too, saying things like, it's lazy not to do housework just because you're working, or being a homemaker is hard, so help with the chores. I see, Caleb said, considering my words, then it's better to call off the marriage. Hey, don't say unnecessary things. I almost had him convinced. My sister snapped, her desperation showing. Did you hear that? She said convinced. That's not how you talk about someone you're going to marry, is it? Exactly. I think it's best to cancel the wedding. Caleb agreed and started to walk away. Wait. Don't go. Caleb. Emma. What are you doing? My wedding is ruined. Sophia screamed at me. Don't blame me. It's your own fault. You're just getting what you deserve. 
My sister's anger flared even more at my words. If you hadn't come to the wedding in the first place, none of this would have happened. It's your fault. Take responsibility and bring Caleb back right now. I understand how you feel, I said calmly, but Caleb seems to have lost his will to marry. If you got married now, it would only bring both of you misery. It's better to end it here. What am I supposed to do now? Did you hear the cancellation fee? He said it's $30,000. That's a lot of money. Yes, it is. Even if you split the fee, you'd still owe $15,000. And if they decide it's your fault, you might be stuck with the whole amount. But that's so unfair. I only said some harsh words. Canceling the wedding over that is too much. That's Caleb's decision, not mine. Father, mother, say something, my sister pleaded, turning to our parents. Suddenly, they were all smiles, trying to appease me. Oh, I never realized Emma had become so successful. As a mother, I'm so proud, my mother gushed. Of course, I always knew Emma was a real go-getter, my father added. From now on, we should rely on Emma for support. Rely on my money? You must be joking, I said, feeling a surge of anger. You've both treated me terribly, and now you expect me to take care of you? Emma, why would you say that? We've always been a family. Why would you suddenly want to live on your own? I stayed with you because I believed in family bonds. I thought that living together might help you understand my work someday. But you never did. Instead, you insulted me, and now you want to rely on my success? How could anyone live with people like that? I understand. I'm sorry. From now on, I'll cherish you. Please continue living with us, okay? I said no, didn't I? I don't want to live with you anymore. Even though I said that, father and mother kept insisting. What if we kick Sophia out of the house? Then you'll live with us, right? What? Wait, father, what are you saying? Shut up. I was a fool to expect anything from you. We'd be better off living with Emma than with you. It was the moment father abandoned my sister. As a family member, I didn't want to witness such a cruel moment. Father, just so you know, I hate people who abandon others so easily the most. What? What are you saying? People like that will eventually flip-flop on me too, so I can't live with them. No way. Hey, you stupid husband, what are you doing? Failing to lure her in? Shut up. While father and mother were arguing, Caleb returned now dressed in casual clothes. What's going on? You're still fighting? Caleb, I can't believe you really went to change. I told you I would, didn't I? What are you talking about? Are you really going to call off the wedding? I hate this. Why is this happening? Yeah, just so you know, you're the cause, so you'll have to bear the full cancellation fee. I've already talked to our parents about it. What? That's terrible. It's not just my fault, is it? Sis, no matter how you look at it, it's your fault. Hey, hey, you be quiet. How dare you tell the boss to be quiet? I won't tolerate any more insults to the boss. Wait, wait, please wait, boss. Have you called the limo yet? No. I got caught up in talking and forgot to call. Then I'll call it. I need to go home too. With that, Caleb started making the call. Wait a minute. Please reconsider. Reconsider? What's going to change? I don't love you anymore. You know. Don't say that. It was my fault. I promise I won't say anything terrible to Emma again. We've had this conversation many times. Enough already. Boss, I've called the limo. It'll be here soon. Then let's wait outside. I'll go change too. Wait, Emma, let's talk. 
there's nothing to talk about. Wait. Emma. Father and mother are begging too. Without you, we'll have to rely on Sophia's money. But Sophia will pay the cancellation fee and run out of money. We won't be able to live properly. Father. Mother. If you need money, why don't you get a part-time job or something? No way. I don't want to work at this age. It's okay. There are still people working even in their 70s. And father and mother are still in their 60s, right? You're still energetic. That's not the problem. My body is heavy and it's hard to move. And you're telling me to work? Yes. No way. Are we done here? I'm going to change. So don't talk to me anymore. After I get home, I'll pack my bags and stay at a hotel for now. I have no intention of dealing with you ever again. Hey, wait. Wait for me. Please don't go. Don't abandon us. Emma. My sister and parents were screaming, but I quickly changed and left the venue. Afterward, I rode home and the limo Caleb called, packed my bags, and headed to a hotel. I looked up apartments at the hotel, signed a lease right away, and completely cut ties with my family. Sophia ended up having to pay the $30,000 wedding cancellation fee, and my parents were so angry that they disowned her. In the end, my parents ran out of money and both had to work part-time. Sophia, having nowhere else to go after being disowned, began living as a gig worker. I continued to grow my company, increase my income, and lived happily ever after.